Hello and welcome again to another session of the digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with uh, the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter, intended to help uh, individuals learn uh, the basics of anatomic pathology and surgical pathology wherever they may be. Our patient today comes uh, from the realm of GI pathology. It's a 55-year-old man with a somewhat complicated medical history. He has uh, a known bleeding diathesis and has bled uh, significantly following even minor procedures. Uh, that may be due to factor deficiency related to cirrhosis. Um, and on a recent uh, scan, he was found to have several polyps in the stomach. Here we can see his uh, cirrhotic liver, um, a large spleen, and within the stomach, comparing two uh, subsequent uh, scans over time, we see these uh, polypoid lesions uh, protruding into the lumen of the stomach um, and uh, having smooth surfaces. There is no significant adenopathy identified, and uh, the wall of the stomach appears to be fairly uh, uniform without uh, significant uh, thickness. Well, uh, this uh, raises the question of uh, where, do, where does this uh, possibility fit into the realm of cancer? Uh, this could certainly be an exophytic cancer or it could be a benign polyp. Um, but let's think about some of the uh, risk factors for gastric carcinoma and how they may fall out with regard to this patient. Uh, certainly we know that GE reflux disease, obesity, salty, and smoked food, smoked fish and protein meats and so forth are risk factors for uh, gastric cancer. But also a diet that is low in uh, antioxidants, fruits and vegetables uh, also plays into there. Family history and genetic factors play a role. Uh, and then of course, uh, the inflammatory disorders such as helicobacter or atrophic chronic gastritis uh, come into play as well. Smoking and alcohol, uh, as well as to some degree, uh, geography and ethnicity although this uh, tends to be more likely related to dietary um, and family factors. So our patient uh, may have uh, some of these factors um, as well as uh, who knows, perhaps uh, some of the inflammatory factors as well. So uh, endoscopic mucosal resection was performed in this case. And as we look at uh, this uh, lesion here at low magnification, we can see that it's very epithelial, uh, almost solid epithelium with uh, little bits of stroma in it, um, and has a uh, glandular pattern. Um, uh, coming in onto higher magnification, we can see uh, that there's very little stroma in between here. And looking at uh, this uh, surface epithelium here, uh, we see that uh, most of the nuclei are very basal with uh, some associated mucin, maybe not quite uh, entirely typical of uh, foveolar type of epithelium, but certainly looks like we have some degree of dysplasia here as well, uh, as we have areas where the nuclei become somewhat stratified. Now of note, and if you're a very astute observer, you'll say these are not uh, goblet cells of uh, intestinal metaplasia. Uh, cells like this, cells like this, they look a little bit funny. Um, and here's another little funny mucin droplet as well. Uh, so keep those in mind as we uh, look a little further. Here's some more of these uh, types of cells here. Because as we uh, come into the stroma here, we begin to see that in the stroma, there's a few uh, funny looking cells as well. And in fact, uh, here it's uh, the cat's out of the bag. This is clearly a uh, signet ring cell or diffuse type of adenocarcinoma. Um, so we're looking at a, a gastric polyp, uh, an adenoma, with uh, apparent evidence of uh, infiltrating diffuse type uh, adenocarcinoma. And then we have superimposed here this uh, very uh, uh, interesting scenario with these intraepithelial uh, cells uh, varying types that look as though uh, they could be a precursor lesion. So we'll look around a little bit more and take a look at some of the other cuts on this slide. 
uh, because I think we should uh, get a good look at this uh, as well uh, in several areas. So here's another area where uh, we have the stroma lamina propria infiltrated by uh, the diffuse type of adenocarcinoma coming into focus here now. Um, and this jumps out at us. Uh, again, though, as we look around here um, in, say, this gland right here, cells like this, like this, uh, these uh, are not the typical goblet cells. These look a little different uh, here. Um, and so I think we have, in addition to uh, this uh, uh, infiltrating component, we have an intramucosal or intraepithelial component uh, that has uh, areas of uh, uh, in situ neoplasia uh, evident in these scattered, almost pagetoid like uh, cells uh, that are resembling uh, the infiltrating carcinoma that we have over here. So uh, this raises the question about uh, precursor lesions. Um, and there's been some good study on this uh, with regard to the intestinal type carcinomas uh, that we know that these are related oftentimes to the uh, uh, inflammatory processes of either uh, helicobacter or atrophic chronic gastritis leading to intestinal type metaplasia. Uh, and then subsequent mutations giving rise to dysplasia and then uh, conventional intestinal type adenocarcinoma when you add on TP53 mutations and other things to the APC or other uh, uh, hypermethylation uh, changes that have, may have preceded them. Uh, with uh, regard to the diffuse type, however, um, there may be another uh, type of metaplasia that's involved. Uh, or uh, there may be uh, some branch points with regard to other types of metaplasia. So uh, here, as we look at this uh, four panel slide, uh, you can see the uh, helicobacter gastritis here illustrated with uh, immunohistochemical stain. And not infrequently, that can result in areas of intestinal metaplasia as we see in panel D. Uh, what we don't recognize quite as often uh, is what's been called spasmolytic polypeptide expressing metaplasia, or uh, in some uh, cir circles, it's called um, <clears throat> antralized oxyntic mucosa or pseudopyloric metaplasia, uh, mucous metaplasia, or other terms can be used for it. And you can see how this begins to resemble uh, the lesion that we are looking at, uh, looked at in our, our case, uh, where we have these altered uh, foveolar glands um, that look uh, very much uh, more like uh, uh, oxyntic, or excuse me, like uh, pseudopyloric uh, precursors. Um, in, in situ lesions, such as we saw in our lesion in our uh, case today, have been uh, seen uh, and uh, can be recognized in some circumstances, but they're not widely uh, recognized or accepted as the precursor lesion. So uh, we mentioned familial syndromes. There are a number of genetic uh, frequency issues that can be associated with cancer uh, in the stomach, and particularly with diffuse cancer. The CDH1 mutations are widely recognized as predisposing to uh, diffuse gastric cancer, as well as uh, lobular breast cancer. Uh, we know that Lynch syndrome with uh, mismatch repair gene mutations uh, can be involved with uh, precursors of gastric carcinoma as well as the APC gene in familial adenomatous polyposis. Uh, there also is the so-called gastric adenoma and proximal polyposis, which is a more specific syndrome that involves just a portion of the APC gene. And then finally, uh, lee frau uh, syndrome with PP53 uh, abnormalities and putz jaeger syndrome with SDK11 gene uh, being involved have been associated with gastric cancers. Uh, really, the only one with a strong association with diffuse type is this uh, CDH1 uh, gene mutation. Uh, however, I think it can also be seen in these other uh, lesions. So our final sign out to the diagnosis today is diffuse signal ring type adenocarcinoma arising in a gastric adenoma with associated in situ uh, type carcinoma. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed that and learned uh, some uh, interesting points to uh, consider in your practice. Uh, please uh, leave some comments as to times when you've seen precursor lesions or other uh, subtle changes that uh, may lead to gastric carcinoma. 
and how you manage those in your particular circumstances. I know, depending on ethnicity, screening for gastric cancer uh, can be uh, quite different than is practiced here at the University of Oklahoma. So uh, until ne next time, uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, stay safe and uh, thanks for joining us.